<clears throat> Welcome to Genesis. It's good to see you. May God bless you. Uh, can we take the, the fabulous book of Genesis out of the austere classrooms of America and just bring it there into your home and very simply uh, talk to you about it? That's what we want to do. Uh, we have found it so refreshing. Well, refreshing is a poor word. We have found it so full of revelation, a knowledge of God, a knowledge of man, a knowledge of our universe, a knowledge of how to live on the face of the earth adequately and uh, resourcefully. We want you to know how to live the same way. We are eager for you to. Uh, I think in our modern society, we flippantly threw the Bible to one side and thought science was a god. And the little god began to change so much and have so many different ideas about itself until we decided it was a very poor god. Uh, we took it from a capital G down to the lowercase g, and that's where it should stay. And we found the Word of God uh, full of revelation, divine truth, seeking to guide us and to direct us. Today's lesson has to do with Genesis, a book of firsts, all kinds of first things, <laughs> first timers. You know, the, the, the first time something happens is always interesting, always exciting. And, and, and Genesis is loaded with firsts. Really, I suppose you could count a hundred different first things that happened in the book of Genesis. And it would be very interesting for you to go through Genesis and say, first time for this, first time for that. Let's, let's take a few of them in this lesson uh, that we are working with today, and I believe it will be very exciting for all of us. No other book in mankind's libraries possesses so many first-timers. This came first, and so forth. In the book of, uh, of Genesis, chapter 2, uh, look at verse 20, if you would. Adam gave names uh, to all the cattle, the fowl of the air, to the beasts of the field. But for Adam there was not found an helpmate for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had, had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Hey, talk about modern society and its problems. You can resolve them in the first part of Genesis here. You see, you can resolve them, that a man should leave his father and mother and cleave under his own wife. Now, when it comes to the first to the first, you have in Genesis chapter 1, the first person. We just read about it. The first person was Adam that ever lived upon the face of this earth. That's, that's an interesting. We also read to you about the first marriage. The first marriage. The first man, the first woman that got together and they produced children. The first marriage ever in the history of mankind. And then you have before us man's first responsibility. His first responsibility, the Bible says here that he was to keep the garden and that he was to have dominion. God says, I give you dominion over everything that moves in this, on the face of this earth. So he was to have dominion and he was, to, he was a keeper of the garden. Man, I suppose you'd say, was a farmer first before anything else in the world. He was to dress the garden and he was to keep the garden. So we have man's, the first man the first marriage, we have the first responsibility, and we have man's first clothes. God was the tailor. In Genesis 3 and 2, uh, we, we read there about the serpent said to woman, we may eat the, the tree of the garden, and, and she put together the fig leaves, and then God came down and took them away and gave them skins of animals. That means a, a sacrifice, an animal had to die, to provide the skin and put it upon the woman and the man. And there were the first clothes, the first clothes that man ever had. I'll tell you something real interesting. I have been into the Gran Chaco Boreal in the middle of South America, uh, four and five months journey to get back in there and back. I've met Indians that had never seen a watch before, had never seen a camera before, and, and we ministered to these Indians. And so I began to talk to them about Jesus. And now, uh, some of the men wore almost nothing, just a slight little G-string around here. Many of the women, that's all they had was a thing a little wider, about that wide, around their middle, with nothing on the upper parts of their body. As soon as they heard about the Lord Jesus, 
And as soon as they said, you know, I'd like to be a Christian, you know the next thing they asked for? They said, do you have a piece of cloth that I could cover the upper part of my body? And we'd say, well, why do you want to cover the upper part? He says, well, since we found Jesus, we're ashamed to be that way. You know, it's an amazing thing to me that the closer you get to God, the nicer you get, you know? And the further you get from God, the more you get like an animal, unclothing yourself, disgracing yourself. And so you just have to watch people. If they're coming toward God, they're getting, they're getting more beautiful and lovely and nice. And if they're going away from God, just watch them. They're, they're going right out there to be like the animals. They're headed the wrong way. America, it's about time we head toward God and, and to stop your, your nudist shows and all that bunch of filthy junk and, uh, and, and let us turn to the living God and serve the living God who cares for us. Now, Genesis is a book of firsts, first times, first times. We have the first holy day right in the beginning, Genesis 2 and 3, and God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it because he had rested from all of his work, which he had created and done on the seventh day. So we have the first holy day, the first rest day in, in, the, in the whole of the history of the, of the universe. We got the first rest day uh, right here in this book of Genesis. We have the first information about knowledge and evil, about the knowledge of good and evil, right in the first book of the Bible, in second chapter, and in and, and, and chapter 2 and verse 9, you have a knowledge of that which is good and that which is evil. Right in the first uh, book of the Bible, you have the first blessing. In Genesis 1, 21, God created great whales and so forth and, 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 and all these things. And then it says, and God blessed them. And saying, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters of the sea and let the fowls of the air multiply here on the earth. So we have the first blessing spoken of in the universe. The first is in this book called Genesis. And then on the negative side, you have the first deception. Lucifer uh, had deceived the woman and, and told her that she would be smarter, more clever, and, uh, and everything if she just eat of the fruit of this tree and that God wasn't telling the truth about it. And so he, uh, we have the first lie. He told a lie. And the first deception, you say, how do you know? Because Eve said that the serpent has beguiled me. He has deceived me. And so it is the first deception. You find it right in the first book. And if you find it so far back, we should learn how to live. That's what the book of Genesis is all about, to teach you how to live. Then you have the first curse, where, where God had to curse the serpent, and, and they had to curse the field and so forth, uh, and, and cause briars to grow. Because man sinned. So you have the first curse that man has ever known right in the first book. It's very interesting in the same way you have the first bloodshed. That, 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 that's bad. Uh, you have the first murder. Right in the fourth chapter, it says, and he said, thou, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And Cain had killed his brother. And you have the first murderer. You have the blood, first bloodshed. You didn't have to wait 10,000 years for that to get started. Murderers, well, Adam was the first man. His own son was a murderer. You know, when you're in rebellion against God, evil, evil is everywhere. You don't, you don't have to go far from it. A preacher's son can go, the, can go the limit of evil and sin. A preacher's son from the best to the worst, all in one generation. And that's exactly what happened here. And you have the first, the first rebellion. God said, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. Man said, I won't. And you have the first rebellion. And so rebellion is not new. It's as old as the human race. Then, to your amazement, you might <laughs> realize, we have the first drunkenness. In, in Genesis 9, 21, it says, He drank of the wine and was drunken and was unclothed within his tent. That's what drunkenness will do for you. That's what alcoholism. And you got it right there in, in, the, in, the, first, in, in the first book in the Bible that people could get drunk and, 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 and don't, want to, don't need to get drunk. That's where your troubles start. That's where your problems start. And then uh, uh, in this first book of the Bible, you have the first, the first fear. I thought that was interesting. The, the first fear, you know, right in the first book of the Bible. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid. I was afraid. That's Genesis 3 and 10. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And so transgression, transgression breeds fear. Did you know that in our land today, there are more people fearful than ever before per capita in the history of mankind? There are millions of people that take all kinds of medicines to help them get away from fear, all kinds of fears, fear of the future, fear of death, fear of high places, 
uh, claustrophobia. Uh, they're, they're just full of fear. It, it all began in Genesis. It all began with the first transgression. Fear was born in transgression, and it's been there all of the time, all of the time. Now, to you spiritual friends, uh, in, in the book of Genesis, you have the first prophecy, and God was the prophet. That's in Genesis 3, 14 and 19, where God spoke and prophesied that there would come one that would bruise the serpent's head. And, and so the Lord Jesus Christ was prophesied 4,000 years later, he came. That's something. And yet the prophecy began, Genesis. Oh, it's a book of firsts. Almost everything that's any good started in Genesis. Isn't that great? Isn't, isn't that something? You have the first worship. In Genesis 18 and 2, it says, He lifted up his eyes and looked at loath. Three men stood before him, and, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them. And from the tent of his door, he bowed himself toward the ground and began to worship. And so you have the first worship in the book of Genesis. And, and so you have uh, the good and also the bad. Uh, in, in the good part of it, you have the first, the first angel mentioned. Now, uh, I believe, and listen to me, that we're living in that time. We've got a lot of lessons on angels that you should order them. Uh, uh, in, in these days, there's going to be more angelic appearances and more people blessed by angels than ever before. That's right. And you, you should get acquainted with angels. But the first operation of angels was right in this book uh, of Genesis. In the, in the first book of the Bible, uh, right through to the last book of the Bible, angels are very much in evident. But... Uh, in Genesis 3, 24, it says a special cherubim stood at the door of the Garden of Eden and he drove out man. It was an angel that did it, a cherubim uh, that, was, uh, that, that did it and was placed there uh, with a flaming sword turning every way and to keep man back from the tree of life. And so here we have the first angelic activity uh, demonstrated uh, to us in the first book of the Bible. And then... I think it'd be nice to mention, and this is, I suppose, just a little bit on the negative side. The first tear ever shed was in Genesis. No, no, man didn't wait 10,000 years before he cried. The first tear ever shed was in Genesis. Uh, in Genesis 3, 8, 9, it says, They heard the voice of the Lord God walk in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord among the trees. And the Lord called him in, Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And, and, and here we find man with a broken heart. And a little later, and a little later, when one brother killed another brother, that mother and father had to bury, had to have the first funeral, the first funeral in the history of mankind. They had to have a funeral, and they wept tears of sadness and sorrow that one of their sons would kill another of their sons. And that was the second generation of human beings. There were no apes included. That was the second generation of human beings right in the Word of God. Right in the Word of God, we hear about it. Now we also find that the first divine refusal was right here in Genesis. Genesis 4 and 7, it says, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, Cain wanted to be accepted of God. And God says, If you are refused, sin's at your door. There are millions of people refuse today of God. God don't accept you. You're full of sin. You're full of corruption. You're full of evil. You're full of rebellion. You're full of adulteries. You're full of lying. You're full of stealings. God can't accept you. That began in Genesis. This first man came. God said, you could have been accepted. Sin lieth at the door. The original word there says croucheth. Croucheth at the door like a tiger, a panther, ready to leap. Sin croucheth at the door. And so the very beginning of the Bible uh, revealed to us that it's the same as today. Sin is a deceiving business. A sin crouches there uh, seeking to destroy you and seeking to get you to go the wrong way, to, to do the wrong thing, uh, to disobey God, to stand out against God. When God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Sin says, don't bother with God, you'll get along all right. Today you look at the broken homes, the broken hearts, the broken society, the, the penitentiaries full of people, the jailhouses full of people, the insane asylums full of people, your hospitals full of people. You can only say one thing, man needs a savior, man needs a healer, man needs God. And that was the same problem. It started in Genesis, 
and it's gotten as far as your town, but uh, it's not new. It's not new. That's the thing I want you to know. Sin, rebellion, adultery. Did you know in the, in the first book of the Bible, they had every sin. They had incest. Yeah, they had incest. Uh, they, they, they had murder. They had every sin you can name today. They, they had it right in the beginning. So sin is not new. Rebellion is not new. Transgression is not new. It'll take you to the wrong place. We want you to love and to serve God. And so then you fear first. The first wickedness in man's heart. In Genesis 6 and 5, God said the wickedness of man was great in the earth and the, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. You ought to read that. That's Genesis 6 and 5. That God found in a man's heart. Oh, you say, it's the neighbors that cause it. It's, no, no, no. God said, in a man's heart, in a man's heart, these things were. And, and so we find these things located in your heart. And, and man needs to know that. Man needs to realize that. And man needs to know that God wants to change your heart and to make you a good person and a, and a person that loves God. I think it's very significant that the first sacrifice is in, is in there. That Abel brought his sacrifice and he gave of the firstlings of his flock. And, and God was pleased with it. And God respected the offering of Abel, the first sacrifice. There have been many sacrifices, many sacrifices. But the first one we find in the book of Genesis. We're only trying to show you that Genesis is a book of first. You ought to read it first. Uh, understand it first. It'll be very exciting for you, I am sure. And I've just told you a few moments ago the first funeral where the parents had to bury their own son who was murdered by their other son was there. Their first hate was there. Hate. Isn't that something? In Genesis 4 and 5, and <clears throat> but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And, and Cain was wroth. It says, very wroth. Very wroth. And his countenance fell. Isn't that something? The hate was so great against God, he, was a, he went into a fit of anger. You know, went into a spell of anger. So getting in a fit of anger is not new, you see. It, it is not new. Uh, and and uh, right in the beginning of the Bible, men, men had those things. The first hate. And, and God refused him, and he killed his fellow man. Isn't that, isn't that just like today? You know? God refused him, and, and he, he turned around and, and killed his brother. Uh, because God, the brother hadn't done anything to him. The brother was 100% innocent. Isn't jealousy? Well, there you are. That's the first jealousy. The first jealousy in human history is found right here in the book of Genesis. And that makes it interesting. Now, for some of you that are wondering about these things, the first polygamy is in Genesis. In Genesis 4, they hadn't gotten going very far. Uh, in 19, Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of, the, of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And so the first polygamy of not being satisfied with one woman, you see, was right in the beginning. In the beginning. It hasn't just... All your badness didn't just get started. Man has been bad from the Garden of Eden without God. With God, he is good. With God, he has an eternity, eternity of blessedness and, and wonderfulness. But with the devil, he has an eternity of hell, fire and brimstone and remorse. It's better to live for Jesus. And that's the big thing we want you to do is turn your life over to God and to love and to serve God. Now, the first worldwide calamity was in Genesis. You call it the flood. And you find that uh, discussed for us in Genesis chapter 6. You see, we'd only gone six chapters so we got to the first world calamity. World calamity. And I can't read it to you, but you can read it between verse 12 and verse 22, uh, telling you about the flood of waters. It came on the first sur surface of the earth and covered the whole earth. Now that's the reason you find seashells in the top of the mountains. That's the reason you find little fish in the top of the mountains laying there in the rock is because the Bible says the universal flood, the first world judgment, the first world calamity, uh, was the flood of waters that came because of man's sin. Neighbor, it's sin, it's breaking the law, it's doing wrong that causes our sorrows and troubles and trials and heartaches in this world. Please believe me, the fabric of your being and the fabric of the universe is so constructed that no evil can bring good. No unrighteousness can bring good. It cannot make the wrong cannot make a right. A right only can make right. And God created the universe upon that formula, and it has to follow that. God wants you to follow it. God wants you to know him 
God wants you to love him. God wants you to serve him. And so the first universal sorrow, the first universal judgment was the flood that came upon people because they had rebelled against God, refused to serve God, and had gone uh, their own way. We also find, and this will be interesting to you, the first person that was called a just man or justified. We find that. We find that in the book of Genesis. In Genesis 6 and 9, it says these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a justified man, just man. A ju it says it perfect in his generation and walked with God. How do you like that? Right in the midst of all the bad, there was the good. Right, at, right, right in the midst of all the negative is a positive. Right, right around those people that were saying, I want to murder and I want to kill, was a man uh, that says that he was justified, just as if he had never sinned. He was perfect in his generation. That's something. And he walked with God. How do you like that? And so God has had his people always. God has had those that loved him and served him always. Yes, Genesis is a book of firsts. When you go through them and you say, isn't it amazing? The number of first things that took place in, in, the great, in this great book of Genesis. Maybe you didn't realize it. The first demon worship is in that book. In Genesis 6 and 5, God saw the weakness of the heart. The man was great in that every imagination of the thought of his heart was evil, evil continually, evil, just worshiping the devil, just worshiping evil. It was right there in the first book of the Bible, the first war, the first war. And you'll be uh, interested to know that Abraham was the first general. He didn't, you didn't class him as a general, I don't suppose. Uh, he took his, the members of his own household and fought five kings and won. And uh, that's in Genesis chapter 14, beginning in verse 2. And these made war with Berah, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shineb, king of Adma, and, and Shemember, uh, king of Zeb Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them into Dan, and brought back all the goods, and brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and all the women also, and the people. <laughs> uh, isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, the good man, Abraham, won the first war against evil men. That's in Genesis, in this first book. The first adultery is in Genesis. That's right. In Genesis 38, you find Tamar, uh, and, uh, and uh, it, uh, she caused incest, not only adultery. She was uh, his own daughter-in-law. And the Bible speaks against having intercourse with your own daughter-in-law. And, and so we find it right there in the first, in the first book of the Bible. You find the first tithing paid in the book of Genesis. You that wish to pay tithes in Genesis 14 and 20. And, the, and blessed be the most high God which shall deliver us out of thine hands. And he gave Melchizedek tithes of all that he had. The first love story of all the love stories. The first love story is in the book of Genesis. The first love story is there. And the first rape where a woman was raped. You find that in Genesis chapter 34. That she was taken in by these people. She was raped by them. And they defiled her and kept her. And they didn't even turn her loose until our brothers went and got her. And they had a war over the business of rape. And so when you go through, you, you find so many of them. There, there are so many. Uh, first, Genesis is not only the book of the beginnings. It's a book of firsts. A book of firsts. And as I'm going to be teaching you uh, regarding the days of creation, that each one of them has a spiritual significance. And so does this lesson today. You must choose yourself if you wish to be on God's side or not. I would like today for you to choose to be on God's side. Could I bless you, please? It's free. Receive a blessing from God. Lord, I pray right now that you will bless my neighbor. Right now, let the powers of hell, the powers of the devil be broken, and let the power of God come and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I believe you for this miracle. I believe you for the power of God. I believe you for your blessing. Right now, bless these. Bless them now. And won't you, at this moment, give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And won't you, you say, but I belong to a church. Well, belonging to a church is not exactly what we're talking about. You can belong to a church and still be evil. But if you belong to Christ, you can't be. Because his righteousness comes within you and you become a new person in Christ Jesus. 
And that's the best time to join a church is after you're born again, after you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Then you associate with a body of believers that you learn and teach the Word of God. So that's the best time to do it. Why don't you give your heart to the Lord? Just kneel and pray and say, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Write my name in heaven, and you will feel the assurance inside. If you have a Bible close by, read 1 John 1 and 9. That's 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.